couple of weeks ago, maybe a week and a half ago. I did a transmission service on a 2012 Nissan Versa. The car was overfilled. You'll see that in the video. We corrected the level, but at the same time, I wanted to do an experiment and see if I can get the level correct or see what kind of data I could gather by using an infrared temperature gun and watching the scan data to see if the temperatures on the scan data matches what I'm getting on the infrared temperature gun. Now, what we found in the video is kind of conclusive, but not really conclusive. So let's watch the video and let's see what kind of information we get. Subscribe, like, comment, share, all of that good stuff. Peace for now. So it looks like we have our 70 degree baseline starting point, which means that it's probably about 68 to 70 degrees in the shop. This car has been sitting in the shop for a while, so it should be about the same temperature as the shop. 70 degrees, that's what we see on the temperature gun. And yeah, let's go. Uh Yes, getting the dipstick out is pretty tricky. You will need a sharp straight pick like you see in the video. You will have to slide your pick down the back of the metal flap at the top of the dipstick that catches the locking tab on the dipstick and pry the locking tab back at the same time you are pulling up on the dipstick. Now if you want, you can blame the Nissan engineers for this overly complicated process. Just don't blame me.
Alright, so after running the car through each gear and holding each gear for about 15 seconds, we end up with an ATF temp count of about 111 on the scanner and 107.5 degrees measuring at the center of the transpan drain ball using an infrared temperature gun. Now this tells me, and I never really paid any attention to this before, but it tells me that the ATF temp count is probably nothing but ATF temperature measured in Fahrenheit. The only difference is that I am taking the measurement on the outside of the pan so the temperature I would like to think will be a little lower. And that's what's actually being reflected on the temperature gun. Now I do expect for this trend to follow all the way up to the ATF temp count of 155 to 160 which is where we will be setting the CVT fluid level. So let's see what happens. So we got um 144.5 at the transparent drain ball. And I took the temperature like three times at that transparent drain ball. I was getting 144.5, 145. Somewhere between 144 and 145 is what I was getting at the transparent drain ball. Directly on the ball. So we're at the correct temperature, ATF temp count. Let's see where we're at on the dipstick. So in conclusion, we can see that the temperature on the pan, the drain ball specifically, seems to follow the ATF temp count by a few degrees at the start of this test, showing about a 4 degree temperature difference with the trans pan being 4 degrees cooler. But towards the end of this test, we end up with a temperature gap of about 11 degrees with an ATF temp count of 160 and a pan temperature of 149 degrees using the temperature gun pointing at the drain ball. Now this is not the first experiment that I've done using this method and across the board on every experiment I am coming up with similar results where the temperature difference is about 10 to 13 degrees cooler using the infrared temperature gun on a transpan drain ball versus the temperature being displayed on the scanner. So is this enough information for somebody to be able to properly set the CVT fluid level without the use of a scanner that can read the transmission data and using only a $20 infrared temperature gun? I would say yes and no. Yes because I believe this method will get you close, very close to the correct level, so much so that if this was the only method available to me in a pinch, it's what I would do and I would not feel the need to double check the level when I had access to a transmission data, when I had access to the transmission data using a capable scanner. 
No, because there are variables such as ambient temperature and the accuracy of the temperature gun. Now keep in mind the temperature in the shop where the tests were performed range anywhere from 65 degrees to 70 degrees. So if you do end up setting your CVT fluid level using a temperature gun, make sure that the ambient temperature where you're doing the test are 65 to 70 degrees. Well, not where you're doing the test, but where you're doing the service. So make sure that the ambient temperature in the room or the shop or the garage, wherever you're doing the, um, the service is 65 to 70 degrees. If not, the results may not be the same. Use this method at your own risk. I am not responsible for any damages done to your vehicle because something went wrong. So again, use this method at your own risk. Thanks for watching. This is Hakeem with AutoFix Pal. Peace out. Oh!